and welcome to the My Amazon Guy podcast. I'm Jason Master Mateo. I'm one of the account directors here at My Amazon Guy. I'm here to answer all your questions and all your concerns on Tuesday at a different time. Right now, 5 Eastern, 2 o'clock Pacific. Um, new time, trying it out, see if it works. If it doesn't, we'll mix it around a little bit more. Um, thank you, everyone, for coming. Uh, get a few things here. Um, we will be at Prosper next week. Um, and we will have a booth there. So if you're going to Prosper, you can meet Stephen, Dustin, myself, and, and Matthew. We'll be on uh, booth 410 here, which is kind of in the corner next to the bay side and the main entrance. Kind of cool. It's going to be fun. We'll be uh, going to a bunch of events. I know Steven's speaking at a round table or something like that. So uh, come and say hi. Um, we'll be there on the 13th, the 14th, or sorry, the 14th and the 15th. I think the 13th is the setup day. Um, cool. So let's get to some questions. All right. Osos says, after I hit 10K in sales, when should I provide Amazon with the insurance policy from the date I hit the 10K or the next month? Osos, you should get that policy in as soon as possible if you're close. I have a feeling they're going to reduce that uh, threshold lower and lower at some point. They don't want any liability. They want to make sure every seller is covered on their insurance policy. So get it in and then you don't have to worry about it. New member Sawyer. Thank you for becoming a member Sawyer. Very easy hacks is welcome curious people. Welcome. All right, Casey. Hi, Steve. How do you think the global events would affect e-commerce with oil prices rising? Do you foresee a rise in shipping costs again? And by how much? Any other ways this can affect USA sellers? I mean, uh, all politics aside and what's going on in the world, obviously, you can just see by gas prices in your local community that there's going to be a hit here in the logistics chain again, fuel prices, shipping costs, most likely how fast that reacts and how fast uh, it will resolve itself. No idea. How much of an increase? Who knows? Um, a gas station across the street from my house was $4.30 on Friday. And this, this afternoon, it's like $6.70. I'm in Southern California, so gas prices are already pretty high. But yeah, I would... I would expect to look into the margins that you're working with and factor in in a forecast in the next couple of months an increase in shipping costs, especially if you're doing LTL or pallet load and that sort of thing. Yeah, unfortunate circumstances here. Uh, very easy hacks. Day by day, I'm falling in love with Mag and Steven. Such a perfect and clear approach. One Every niche, just amazing. Thanks, Very Easy Hacks. All right, Very Easy Hacks says, is it okay to include a few misspelled words in the bidding for PPC? Yeah, of course. I mean, there's there's tons of um, camp, good campaigns out there that use misspelled words, um, all kinds of, uh, uh, I mean, I'm trying to think of something I've seen recently. Uh, supplements that have, uh, long, confusing keywords that people search for. Um, but yeah, you'll find them in the auto campaigns too. Uh, relevant misspellings that you can pull out and, and target those. You'll see competitors targeting them when you go into Helium 10. You'll see uh, other people, you know, uh, advertising on those misspellings. And make sure you put them in your SEO in the back end, all text. All right. Uh, Benjamin, tilt, bit, bet. Hey, what's up, man? That's an old employee. Um, ASIN review. All right. 
let's plug that in. So you had great sales over the holidays, slowed down since. And he advised to improve. That's B098 DD7 W6V. All right. This water, is it a tortilla? What is this? Ben, what are you selling? Sushi blanket. All right. So obviously something that would be giftable during the holidays is kind of like a funny brother-in-law, sister-in-law gift. Um, this is <clears throat> something that's <laughs> it's going to spike during the, the Christmas holidays. Um, it's like your BSR, obviously. Okay, here you had something happen after the holidays. It's probably <coughs> decreased search volume for your top keywords here. And let's look at how you're doing. Okay, so the main image is great. I'm sure you know that. Um, secondary images look okay. And copy looks good. Let's go down. You've got good A plus content. You've got some, you've got all your alt text, you know, everything by the book. Perfect. So my best guess here, Ben, is there's a decrease in, in search volume on probably your, your targeted keywords and your organic keywords. If we just start looking down Sushi Blanket over the last month, it's down 19%. If we look at the year-long search volume, and you can just see right there that yeah, maybe people buy this a joke gift for birthday or whatever, but your your seasonal product here. How do you make this not seasonal? Not sure. <laughs> Sushi decoration, maybe. Um, start targeting like, I mean, it's tough, like birthday gifts, joke gifts. You got April Fools coming up. It's not really an April Fools thing. Funny blankets. All the search volume of these gift keywords. Funny blanket throws. All the search volume. Well, this is a terrible example. It's low search volume, but even funny blankets. Just in a broad uh, keyword sense here. Funny blankets. Same thing. It's a big spike at Christmas. That's it. You have extreme seasonality. This is a gift and. It's a joke gift for, for Christmas. Sushi blanket hoodie, novelty gifts, funny adults. Eh. It's another high search volume. Food blanket. I don't know if that's a specific thing. Maybe not. It's another broad term. You can see the same trend line here. And October and a November gift. Christmas, big drop off right after Christmas. So I don't think you're doing anything wrong. The listing looks great. Um, I would be saving your your money right now um keep inventory low and fba to avoid storage fees and get ready to 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 ramp up everything during the holiday season this is not a year-long product this is seasonal can you turn it into a year-long product as a joke birth, birthday gift um people i'm still i'm sure you're still getting sales it's x-ray you uh you're, you know, 134 sales a month. You look at your sales graph. You can see your trend line follows the same as all the, the keywords here. This is a uh, best thing to do here is use the profit and uh, find another product that's not so heavily, uh, heavily seasonal. This is, um, yeah. Everything else looks good though. You got a video? Is that you? Uh, that is, I think so. Um, perfect. Cool, man. Thanks for the ASIN review. All right. Um, let's go to the next question. Second. Sawyer says, hi, Jason. I changed the packaging and my listing to move it from the large to small standard. How should I execute this? 
let the old one wear out, send in the new one, and take it for a remeasurement. So um, you can simultaneously uh, execute this packaging change. Uh, what you're going to want to do is create a new SKU, create a new uh, FBA SKU on the same ASIN. Um, send in your new packaging SKU ASIN. Uh, into FBA and keep it inactive, turn it off, whatever you need to do there. Um, and as it goes through FC processing and all that, uh, sell, try and sell out of your, your old SKU, the old packaging. And there might be a time where you're going to flip on the new SKU and just recall the rest, whatever is left over of the old packaging. And then just like you kind of mentioned here, uh, take the new SKU and it's in FBA and uh, ask Amazon to do a Cubis scan on it, uh, C-U-B-I-S-C-A-N. What they'll do, they'll bring the big Cubis scan machine over to it in the warehouse and it'll shoot laser beams at it. And uh, it'll get a, a complete remeasurement of the product and uh, they will change the dimensions, make sure they do go in the back end after they say they did and make sure that's the case. It might still show up in an oversized or large standard or whatever you're uh, moving it from. You're gonna have to then take it and say, hey, this is the new dimensions. Here's my Cubiscan, reference the case and ask for it to be put into uh, the small standard. That's the easiest way to do it. Um, if you don't wanna make a new SKU, then <laughs> it's not a good idea. Because uh, you're going to sell out and you're not going to have it stock for a little bit while you're swip swapping. So easiest thing to do is just make a new SKU on the same ASIN and uh, you can do it simultaneously. Karen says, I think it's safe to say 1 to two, 12 to 1 p.m. is the much better time. 12 to, to 1 p.m. What, Pacific time or 12 to 1 Pacific or 12 to 1 Eastern? <laughs> I think you mean Eastern. That's uh, <laughs> that's uh, I don't think we've done it at that time yet. I think we started we did at eight Pacific, so we started at eleven on Tuesday. I don't know. I'm thinking about moving this to like evening time, but I don't know. YouTube. Steven's gonna give me an "I told you so" here because we have the data on when the YouTube channel is visited, and it's. It's usually around that time you're talking about, but I thought, hey, let's do a, let's do an afternoon show for once, right? Karen says, uh, I wanted to tell Stephen this because I was in talks with him regarding brand name change. I called Amazon the other day, asked them to change the brand name, my ASIN, and just like that, they did. <laughs> well, I would have bought a lottery ticket that day, Karen. Uh, I'm guessing you got a hold of brand registry support on the phone and you probably talked to somebody on uh, maybe like the new seller team or you just got lucky and they just had the ability to flip the switch, which is great. Um, I'd like to hear more about that, uh, it, how, how you did that process because that would make my life easier. Uh, my team could just call and get the brand name <laughs> changed instead of doing full updates and ticketing Amazon and submitting specimen types and all this stuff. So um, cool. Happy that happened for you. Faith, uh, Faith says exciting. Faith is one of my account managers on my team. Hi, Faith. All right. Mike says Amazon only allows GS1 UPC codes for new pages, not my brand. I don't know if the brand is using GS1 UPCs. Can I buy one-time GS1 UPCs or it must be under the same GS1 account? It's all UPCs for the, uh, of this brand. So Mike, you don't own the brand. You're not sure if they're using, um, uh, what's it called? It's called something. It's called vendor assigned GS1s or something like that, where they have a, specific code at the beginning of each of their U UPCs. You can go look at other products on Amazon if it's showing the UPC and see if that first four, I think it's the first four digits or first five digits are all the same. 
And that would tell you that they are using GS1 UPCs. Can you register a GS1 UPC under a brand name that you don't own? I don't think so. I, I'm not 100% on this, though. I've never done it, never tried to do it. I don't know if it's a good idea. Um, what you can do, and this is the route I would go, is contact the manufacturer if you have a relationship with them and see if they have a UPC for this product. If you don't have a relationship with the manufacturer, but you are authorized seller of this product, you can do something uh, called a G10 exemption and apply for that through Amazon. Now, that's a long process. It takes time. Uh, you have to get give reasons why you need a G10 exemption. Some products aren't um, some products aren't uh, allowed to have G10 exemptions. So those are the two routes I would go. Hopefully you have a good relationship with the manufacturer and they already have one or they'll allow you to get one or get one for the uh, product that's registered through GS1 to the brand, to the manufacturer or what have you. All right, Karen says, no questions or anything, not this ASIN that got the brand name changed is now recognized in my brand catalog. Any explanation of how this happened so effortlessly? So there's been times there are, there's this new group, uh, or I guess a uh, group, but a uh, department in Amazon. They're all in Seattle and they're called the new seller support or something like that. They reach out by telephone first a couple times, and then they set, will send an email. But nobody picks up the phone, so they think it's a scam when the when these uh, this department leaves a a uh, voicemail. Um, the ones I've talked to, they have power to get stuff done. It might have been a similar uh, situation here for you. I've had a conversation with one of them before where. I got inventory, maximum inventory level increased over the phone, like right in front of my eyes uh, after trying for months and months to get the maximum inventory uh, increase for a client, right? So hopefully this is a sign of good things to come. If, uh, you know, they're ramping up seller support, uh, making it a little bit more <laughs> hassle-free, I guess. But yeah, I don't have an answer for you. I have not experienced a brand name change that happened that quickly over the phone with seller support. So Top News says, hi, I just launched two days ago. ACOS is 300% and runs out of budget like 12 p.m., almost no sales. What else can I do? Well, uh, if your ACOS is 300%, there's a big difference if you're spending... $500 a day or $2 a day. Um, but for, was what I uh, what I would just see just from this limited information is uh, your manual campaigns and your, your targets are not targeting the right things. Or if you are getting impressions and you're not getting any conversion or sales, there's something wrong with your main image, your price is too high, you're targeting the wrong... Uh, type of products and keywords going outside of your niche. You're running broad campaigns, maybe like category targeting and stuff like that on a brand new product. There's all kinds of different stuff right here. I would start, I would like shut everything off and start with an auto campaign at a nice budget and go exact match and, um, and start from there. And let that run for a couple weeks. If 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 th this all depends on what category you're in, and there's just so much here. Top news: if you're in supplements and you just launched, 300% sounds pretty good. But but if you're not getting any sales, then you know doesn't sound so good. You could be selling a product that is you know an expensive. I don't know, office chair, office chair, that's $4,500. That could be an issue here. There's all kinds of different stuff. But yeah, that's 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 what I would see. Keep sticking with it. Ahmad says, can you advise uh, how can we re-rank after out of stock? PPC. 
was a, your choice. Um, you have to get back <clears throat> your ranking. You want to relaunch. Sometimes we'll scrub the listing, redo all the SEO, redo the copy, redo the bullets, redo the secondary images, maybe even change up the main image, redo A plus content, and do a very aggressive PPC relaunch. If you were successful in the past and you just stocked out, then use that data and pump up those bids so you can get your rankings back. Um, plenty of people get out of the rut of, out of stock and get back to their original rankings. I see it all the time. You just have to be able to, or you have to be willing to put the money into it, um, and treat it as a relaunch where you're not going to be as profitable for one to two months until you get those rankings back up. Um, in the future, if you're going to stock out and you know, it's coming, uh, wait till you get down to like, you know, 200, 150 units, start raising your price slowly, start cutting, um, turning off some of your advertising so that you can maintain a little bit of that BSR and the indexing while your new stock is still on a boat coming in and you can replenish it a little bit better. You might be surprised when you do that to see how many people will buy your product at a higher price see it all the time when the situation arises product that sold for 39.99 for you know nine months uh gonna stock out we raised the price to 49.99 still selling raise the price to 59.99 still selling raise the price to 69.99 still selling you know and then you can have a new price when you get your your new stock in it used to be 39.99 now we're finding the trend line actually settled at you know 45 95 or something and that's an extra you know 16 bucks that you weren't making for nine months that you didn't know because you didn't test your price i don't recommend doing this if you're if you're not you know stocking out but i do recommend staying profitable and raising your price when you need to you'll find that you'll sell less units but revenue as long as uh, everything's optimized and you're you're growing your ppc campaigns you'll find that revenue will will grow units sold will go down and um you actually be more profitable so uh, advice how to rank it just kind of kind of gave you the advice there uh i'm on good question karen says i set up a plus five days ago for two asins a plus is still under review for both whereas i set up a plus for another asin yesterday and it was approved within literally one minute any reason on this difference? That is uh, completely random, as far as I can tell. We'll even we've even tried this where we make a copy of an A plus content duplicate and uh, submit them both at the same time. One for one ASIN, one for another ASIN. And maybe it's a different color or something, but the A plus content is identical. Uh, one will get approved in seven days, and one will get approved in like twenty four hours. No idea why. Uh, Depends on, I guess, who's reviewing it, if that's a person or an AI, or pretty sure it's people doing it. Um, no no answer there for you, Karen. <clears throat> Ahmad says, can you review this ASIN and device to re-rank as a lost rank after out of stock? Okay, let's do an ASIN review. And uh, let's go to Amazon. And this is... B098XYC7BK. So it's this hop reportable link cleaner. Okay, got a link cleaner. The main image is fantastic. Um, crop properly, properly listing health uh, helium 10 here, saying it's great. Price is there. Um, doesn't look like the brand store is built or the brand's not linked. Uh, a plus content. Good, good, good. Uh, you know, one thing that I'm seeing missing from the imagery here, just from a conversion standpoint, good, you've got alt text, is our target audience. And there's one here. So this is good. There's a doggy. That's good. Uh, da, 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 da. Okay, so he went out of stock. 
right here at some point, I'm guessing, in September. But your current BSR is trending in the right direction. It looks like this past month and this month. Looks right here. And I see you had a dip here in in January, but that's like it's pretty normal. But it looks like you're trending in the right direction. So what can you do to help here? So what's our main keyword? Let's go, let's get our keywords here. And then like it's also if I was looking for this, what am I gonna look for? Uh a lint cleaner. It's a lot of there's like disposable options, I guess, like the ones with the tape, but um let's just put in portable lint. Probably what I would put lint remover. So here's a lot of copycat products. So it's a me too product. See this guy has the animals right in the main photo. Cute little animal, animals. It's not exactly um, compliant, main image compliant. Same with this person. This person's showing the bag that it comes with. Not sure how much value that's adding. But look what your competition is doing here, uh, Ahmed. Um, people love animals. And again, this isn't technically Amazon compliant. But... If this was my product, it's something I would try because everybody else is doing it. Look at these videos, dogs, cats. Um, so let's go to High BSR, a competitor here that's only selling a single pack that is a similar price point to us. And now that I'm looking at it, we are higher priced than almost everybody. We have people including two pieces for $10.99. Why would I want one of the exact same thing? Oh, you have two pieces too, sorry. Is it a two pack? Yeah, pack of two. Okay, perfect. So $12.87. So here's $10.99. $10 There's $12.89. So he's right in our price point. Is this a two pack? No. Two pack, $11.99. So you're close enough. But then you get into these things. Here's a two pack for $6.99. It's a two pack for $5.95. So conversion is suffering a little bit uh, for sure because of the price point and not bringing in these cute little animals. Um, so let's go back to the, let's find a competitor. I was going to find a, Competitor has a lot of reviews. Here we go, 10.99. So let's pull them up. And let's take a look at their keywords versus your keywords. So I had 10,300 and 54 keywords in there. They're advertising them 4,600. You're at a quarter of that and half of, oh, a quarter of the sponsor keywords. So they're spending a lot more on advertising. They're advertising on a lot more keywords than you. Um, how do you get your ranking back up? So we'll take an example right here. Here's our competitor. And let's find something that they're organically ranked for. Number one, that's high search volume lint remover tool. Let's go to our listing. Oh, it's not in our copy. Why not? This gets 1,000 searches a month. Let's find another one. Lint cleaner. I hope you have lint cleaner in your copy. Okay, you do. Uh, let's find some more carpet lint scraper. Not sure if this is for carpet, but there are images of it scraping rugs and stuff. So let's go here. 
oh, it's not in our copy. So we're missing a ton of exact match carpet lint scraper. Um, highly relevant, high search volume keywords in our search terms. So either our title uh, and our bullets and also can be put in our A plus content via crawlable text, alt text of the A plus content, any of this stuff. Do you see how on your particular A plus content, very limited use of crawlable text. There's just a little bit here and a little bit here. There's modules here that you can use to increase. None of the these words here are being indexed. Um, these are all part of the image, but of course, you know, you can add in the back end all text, but I could probably go through, this is just one competitor. I would take eight to 10 relevant competitors here and aggregate all of their data. And we could probably find two to 400 exact match, highly relevant keywords that you are missing from your search terms, copy, bullets, uh, A plus content. And that's why your competitor, that's one reason why your competitor is indexing for 10,000 keywords and you're only indexing for 2,600 keywords. The other, um, driver here is their sponsored keywords that they are spending four times as much on targeting or auto campaigns than you are and that's how you're gonna increase your ranking and get back to where you were before i'm not sure where you were on your ranking before but um that's the strategy and then conversion standpoint going back to that i would definitely try out again it's against amazon terms of service but this happens in the mattress category a lot and there's different categories where amazon just let the slide right because in the mattress category for example if we just had a picture of a, a white mattress that's not very appealing right can't really tell what it is so they let it i mean almost every i would say every mattress uh has uh has like a room set up in the main image. And another one is like, I think office chairs is one. This is all furniture, but yeah, so you'll see images like this. And there's a lot of white background ones, but like this right here. And you'll see it in the pet category a lot. So like dog toy, I think. Maybe it's not dog toy. I know I've seen this where the, they have the dogs there. This is a little bit different. It's not the background that the issue, but they will impose the, the the animal with the toy. And technically, if you look at Amazon's you know main image guidelines, it's not accurate or not within policy. But worst thing that happens is they they suppress your main image and then you just upload. The, the one with the plain white background. So good question, mine. All right, uh, Benjamin, thank you, Jason. I'll be sure to come find y'all at Prosper. Awesome, man, we'll see you there. All right, Karen says, it was 12 to 1 p.m. Eastern last week. Well, maybe I'll change it to a different time next. Oh, I won't be, there will be no show here on Tuesday next week. I'll be out Prosper, unless, uh, Maybe we'll do a live stream from the phone or something. No, I doubt it. Uh, Mike says, I have a listing which was changed all info by a listing hijacker. I got everything changed back to my brand with a title they don't want to change. I opened 50 cases, many auto responses. Mike, you're going to have to do a full update. Um, you might also, if you haven't yet or they didn't have you, delete your SKU for 24 hours. Um this happens on coaching call. I get these coaching calls like all the time and we fix them on the coaching call. Same, uh, same issue. Title won't update, bullet won't update, search term images, whatever it is. Uh, usually after a hijacker or uh, an out of stock that was sitting there for a good while. In your flat file, once you have all your all of your cells filled out under the update delete column, partial update 
will only change things that you're inputting in the column. Anything that's left blank will stay on the back end and won't be affected. Update is like a hard reset, uh, also called a full update. All the information in these cells that exist in the back end need to be filled in first. Sometimes you can get away with uh, not putting the image URLs. Um, but anything that's left blank when you do an update will delete whatever information is currently in the back end in Amazon. So you need to make sure all of the cells are filled out that are relevant for the product that are already there and then whatever you're going to change. So in this case, the product name. And um, do the full update. And it'll usually push through. And if it doesn't, the next step, uh, what we do is we delete the SKU for 24 hours and then do the full update again. And then 99% of the time, that will push the changes through. <clears throat> So if you ever had a vendor relationship, which it's very it's rare, but if you did have a vendor central account, um, you and this and it's like dormant or whatever, and the um, but the ASINs are still on that account from when you used to have a vendor central account. There is a way to push through the changes through the vendor central account uh, as well. And if that is the case, there's a video on YouTube with me at the funny construction add on, and it's called the item maintenance form and. Uh, you can you can check that out and use that video to if you have a vendor central account to push changes through the seller central you need to do the full update that's that's the the way here mud says thank you all right no problem Ahmad. kim says hi what's your advice on crazy creating phrase campaigns bidding strategy dynamic fix bids budget compared to auto broad how many keywords per campaign um I'm not going to be able to answer all of these because, again, with advertising, uh, you need to know the budget and what kind of products you're advertising, how many SKUs, et cetera, et cetera. How many keywords per campaign? 10 to 12, sometimes 15. I uh, like to keep a small hero campaigns, their own, bring in their, their own campaigns, or hero keywords, I should say, bring in their own campaigns. Uh, fixed bids if you're... Uh, again, this is so, this is category dependent and like what what your growth goal is. If you're in a state of maintenance, um, fixed bids. If you're in a state of discovery or um, launch, then dynamic. There's budget rules you can set now. All kinds of different stuff. Um, advice on creating phrase campaigns, bidding strategy. I'm not the expert on that. Uh, hopefully, uh, maybe someone else can uh, can answer that. I'd, I'd call Matt right now. He's our advertising director. I'd be like, Matt, what's your advice here? <laughs> All right. Karen says, once an ASIN gets fully optimized A-plus content for the first time, the A-plus content is up and running. How long will it take for the SEO Boost app and ranking more keywords index? Eh. So you're not going to see an immediate effect. In fact, sometimes you might see a drop in indexing. And it's nothing to be scared of. It, it happens quite often, actually. And then uh, a week or two goes by. And depending on, you have to be complementing this with your, with, your, with your PPC campaigns as well. You can't just have a fully optimized listing, slap it on Amazon, unless it's like a super niche product and like you're one of two sellers or something like that, but even then. And say, oh yeah, I did my search terms and I did my A plus content and I'm just gonna put it on Amazon, no PPC. Let's index. You have a hard time unless you're driving like significant out, outside traffic, uh, brand search volume, or you're a brand that is already being searched on Amazon, just isn't present on Amazon yet. But um, usually one to two weeks, you start seeing a significant increase as long as you're complementing that uh, that um, SEO optimization and all of your your uh, A plus content, and all stuff with good PPC. Mike says, I did a full delete, full update, and the title still not changed. Any other ideas? All right, Mike, you need to go around. I don't know where this hijacker was from, but you need to find out if your product is still somewhere else. So where I've seen this is Amazon Saudi Arabia, Amazon UAB, uh, uh, UAE, sorry. Uh, Amazon Germany sometimes, 
if your hijacker was originally from Canada, uh, make sure that your Canadian account is um, the ASIN is there, even if you don't want to sell on Canada, but make sure it's populated on uh, through NARF or whatever uh, on the Canadian part. And, and uh, you have, you might be able to try and update from there on Canada first and then go back to the US. But other than that, yeah, you're, you, your ASIN is out there somewhere and there's a catalog, internal catalog contribution still. So Amazon saying, no, this isn't the leading contributor, but we can't tell you who it is or whatever. If you have no one else actively selling on your ASIN, then, and you've done the delete, the full update, this is unfortunately a situation where you just kind of have to keep going to seller support and maybe get lucky like Karen did and find somebody on the phone that can flip the switch and, and fix it for you. You did everything that I would have done or had my team do uh, as far as the delete update. Right now we'd be searching other Amazon marketplaces to see if there's a rogue listing out there that's contributing. And after that, they'd be on the phone with Amazon. Uh, that's, that's the way it is. Unfortunately, sorry, I don't have a better answer or a happier answer for you, Mike. Uh, Jeff says, is Amazon eventually going to max out, I'm um, going to a max of 80 characters per title to maximize for mobile in all categories. So we're seeing um, more and more certain categories are getting title character limits. Uh, it's been 150 characters in like clothing for a while, socks, underwear. Um, there's some categories where it's 100 characters. Um, will they go straight to that? I don't think so. Maybe. Depends if they want to redo their mobile um, UI or how it looks. Because <clears throat> even right now, if you if you look at here's here's um, desktop, right? The title's gigantic. It's all bold. You've got your stars here. But when you go into mobile view here, the title gets really tiny. It disappears almost. And all you're paying attention to is the main image. That's why main image is so important. Because on the phone, that's what you see. You're not going to squint your eyes and be like, oh, crinkle paper. All right. Yay. Um, it's either... You get two, three seconds to get the buy. People go to Amazon to buy. You don't go to Amazon to, uh, you know, peruse around and look for different things. Yeah, there's people that do, but it's mostly like, oh, my dog tore up his toy, right? I need to get a new dog toy. All right, dog toy with, or that makes noise, squeaky dog toy, whatever. And you look at a few things and, oh, that's the one. He loves mooses or chickens or giraffes or whatever this, a lion. And that's it. So does the title matter from a conversion standpoint on mobile? In my opinion, it's very limited in most, not most, in, in some categories. There's obviously technical products that people want to know what they're getting, how many hertz is the monitor, et cetera, et cetera. General purchases like this. Um, yeah, there's people out there that need to make sure it's uh, hypoallergenic for their dog and stuff like that. But majority shoppers here are going to see this maybe on mobile. And again, mobile, this changes too. So title gets small and it goes straight to secondary images and they go, oh yeah, that's it. There's a cute dog. There's a cute dog. There's an overweight cute dog. And here we are. Oh, maybe I don't want that, but here's the same. Uh, well, they don't have a product grid. This is why a product grid is important. So if they had a product grid with their other toys here, it would take up space and there'd be other options. So with their lion or their, their chicken or whatever other characters they have, um, they would push this compare with similar items down uh, where there's competitors. Uh, well, not in this particular one, but there can be competitors in this space here and you lose a sale. So will they uh, go down to 80 characters? I don't know. eBay did it, right? I don't know what their character limit is anymore, but 
a couple of years ago they shortened theirs. Um, so maybe. Well, good question, Jeff. Karen says, I've noticed a major decline in sales thus far in March compared to February. We experienced this. It's happening across Amazon due to geopolitical issues. Um, I don't know. I, I, I don't see across all accounts any significant sales decreases that aren't seasonal. Um, people are still buying. What I have seen is a decrease, and we had an example earlier. Well, that was a seasonal product, but I have seen overall decrease in keyword search volume. So less people searching for search for keywords on Amazon. Um, as long as that stays balanced, more people buying. But right now in March, I mean, it's too early too. It's it's the 8th of March. Um, I, you can't look at the micro scale. Will all everything that's going on in the world have an effect on the Amazon <laughs> seller space and the economy? Probably. Uh, we talked about logistics earlier. Um, but yeah, that's uh, overall not really seeing a, a big decrease um, on the age, agency level. Um, so good question, Karen. <clears throat> West Coast uh, Long 85, what do you think of Amazon charging higher fees to Chinese sellers to even the playing field in the Amazon USA marketplace? Are they doing this? Uh, or are you suggesting that they should do this? I'm, I'm not aware. I must have missed this if, if this is an announcement. But um, higher fees, I mean, go on eBay and look up like, a cell phone cable or something like that, even on Amazon. They've done a lot of cutting back on Amazon, but they can sell stuff for a penny still uh, there and subsidize by posts where they're making money on this stuff. Um, so increasing the fees, um, probably even the playing field. But I mean, the same, the same dog toy that you're getting manufactured in China putting your brand on uh, is getting manufactured in some other capacity and they're probably selling it um, with a, maybe a different looking eyeballs or something or a rope attached to it. Uh, some other sellers selling it. So even the playing field's a, a, a tough, you know, question there, but yeah. So, oh, okay. Suggesting. Um, <laughs> they'd probably recoup their costs on manufacturing. Uh, <laughs> like, all right, well, they're charging us more. So now we're going to charge more to manufacture these products for the third party sellers. <laughs> Thoughts on ad software's perpetua per, per, and quartile benefits and pros you have seen from clients. Uh, I don't know. This is, this is not my, Again, uh, automated advertising, especially. I have experience with clients that moved away from Quartile uh, when they came to us. Uh, didn't see any issues about the transition, but that's about that's about it on that. Sorry, and I don't know what per Perpetua is, but Quartile uh, obviously I've heard and uh, transition clients uh, off of it um, multiple times. All right, West Coast says, also think Amazon should have a way to detect when competitors are clicking on your ASIN to kill your advocate, advertising daily budget. Selling on Amazon can get nasty. So that's not how it works. It's not like someone can sit there on their computer and just keep clicking your ad. Um, there's a, a time that starts uh, when the ad gets clicked. That's why a lot of times you'll see attribution maybe like, so we clicked on your ad and then you'll get a sale like the next day. So they clicked on your ad at 10 o'clock at night and you get a sale the next day at, uh, you know, 10 o'clock in the morning. It's the sales attributed to that day, but you don't see a click uh, on that day. Uh, same sort of thing on the opposite way. Um, unless they're running like a VPN farm where they're changing their IP address every single time they're clicking your ad which 
maybe it's happening out there, but um, I I see a lot of people fantasize about this and worry about it. Um, it's probably the least of your worries, unless this someone's really out to get you. Um, if that was the case, I would whatever add their targeting keyword or, or competitor target, I just turn it off for a little bit and and wait for them to get bored, I guess. Um, they go, start going after other ads. Uh, if you notice any type of what you think to be malicious activity, you can make a ticket through the advertising console um, and also brand registry and ask them to investigate, but they're, they're going to tell you that they won't, they don't see anything. So this isn't, this isn't something that's likely happening again. It's tied to the IP, IP address. Um, they'd have to be cycling I, VPNs. And I don't know how easy that is. I'm not a VPN person and, but don't worry about it. <laughs> West Coast says, suggest, oh yeah, we saw that. Thanks, West Coast. Karen says, does brand story alt text and copy index and impact SEO? I made it a point to get important keyword in my brand story and the alt text also should alt text be for important exact match keywords or solo. You want to put your exact match misspellings and Spanish keywords in your alt text because you usually don't want those in your front end. The brand story, uh, alt text and copy uh, yeah, I should index just like uh, anything else that's crawlable on the space. Um, you can test that out by, I don't know, putting a Spanish keyword in the in the uh, in the SEO on the brand story or uh, a sly misspelling um, and see if uh, that starts indexing. Good question, Karen. West Coast says thank you. All right, everyone, that's all the questions for today. And let me cut this off. Thank you everyone for joining. And uh, if you need any help, you can go to myamazonguy.com. We have coaching help. We have questions. You can ask, contact us, ask us questions. And what else? We are hiring. You can go to our jobs page at the bottom, all the way at the bottom, all the way past all these testimonials and lots of uh, positions open. Um, and yeah, uh, hopefully we'll see some of y'all at Prosper next week. Have a great rest of your week and we'll see you later.